Okay. I grew up in Florida. Yeah. And I have a lot of friends, close friends, who are Cuban Americans. Right. And I've heard the stories of their families escaping. Right. And some of them didn't even make it to come right. to the United States for a better life, to right. get away from the Castros. Right. Okay. I mean, the guy puts dick in dictatorship. So I'm trying to understand yeah. how, how do you justify dealing with yeah. the Castros? Well, here's what's happened. We, we've had the same policy since I was born, which was we were going to have uh, an embargo, we were going to cut off all contact, all mm -hmm. communication, and nothing changed. And, you know, I've said this before, when you do something over and over again for 50 years and it doesn't work, okay. it's time to try something new. And we started off initially by allowing more travel to Cuba, by Cuban Americans to visit their family, sending more money back to their family members to help them back in Cuba. We've been doing that for the last uh, four or so years. And it turns out it's been helpful to the people in Cuba. They have more contact with their family. It gives them more hope. Now what we're saying is that by normalizing relations, we're going to be able to still put pressure on the Cuban government, but also what happens now is you've got more visitors to Cuba, you start getting telecommunications into Cuba, you start getting the internet into Cuba, people's minds begin to change, there's more transparency about what's going on, and over time what you're going to see gradually is a shift because not everybody, not everybody in Cuba is able to escape to the United States. And the goal, ultimately, is to make sure that there's freedom in Cuba, not just uh, for the folks uh, you know, who have left. This is dependent on the Supreme Court ruling. Yeah. But do you think that same-sex marriage will be legalized in all of the United States during the time that you're in office? And what can you do to push that along? Well, we've done a lot, to obviously, to push it along. You know, I announced... Uh, my belief that same-sex marriage uh, should be legal, uh, yes. that people should be treated the same. Uh, we argued against, as an administration before the Supreme Court, we argued against uh, the Defense of Marriage Act that was uh, treating uh, married couples, same-sex couples, differently in terms of federal benefits. Uh, the Supreme Court now is going to be taking on a case. Uh, my hope is, is that they go ahead and recognize uh, what I think the majority of people in America now recognize, which is uh, two people who love each other yes. and are treating each other with respect and aren't bothering anybody else, why would the law treat them differently? Why? Why? I mean, why? There's no good reason for it. And no so as a consequence, I think that uh, uh, I'm hopeful the Supreme Court comes to the right decision. But I, I, I will tell you, uh, people's hearts have opened up on mm -hmm. this issue. I think people know... Uh, that uh, treating folks un unfairly, even, even if you disagree with their lifestyle choice, exactly. the fact of the matter is they're not bothering you. Let them live their lives, and under the law, they should be uh, treated equally. And, and yes. as far as me personally, um, you know, just to see uh, all the uh, loving gay and lesbian couples that I know uh, who are great parents and yes. great partners, mm -hmm. um, you know, the idea that we would not treat them uh, like the brothers and sisters that they are, that doesn't make any sense to me. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. You're almost done with me and, <laughs> and your time as president. Yeah. With the time left, what would you hope your legacy is? Well, you know, we saved an economy that was on the brink of depression. Uh, we've created 11 million new jobs. We've uh, doubled clean energy. We've you know, reduce pollution. We've made sure that more young people can go to college. Uh, we have given now, so far, 10 million people health insurance that didn't have it before, and that's going to grow over time. Um, you know, we uh, have ended two wars uh, in a responsible way, but we still have challenges. Uh, every day I wake up and I ask myself, in particular, how can I make sure that folks who are working hard can uh, not just survive, but how can they thrive? How can they get ahead? And so in the State of the Union that I just gave, we talked about how can we provide more help for uh, young families with child care. Huge burden on a lot of people. 
uh, how can we make sure that college is more affordable? And what I want to do is make sure that uh, the first two years of community colleges are free so that young people can uh, you know, have confidence that if they go and try to get more skills that they're not going to be paying uh, through the nose in, in terms of a lifetime of debt. Uh, you know, I want to make sure that uh, we're doing more to raise the minimum wage and providing paid sick leave. So there's a lot of basic stuff that we can do that would ensure the economy goes strong, but more importantly, that everybody benefits from a strong economy. Uh, and that's going to be my focus over the next two years. And uh, you know, once I'm done, then I'll look back and I'll, I'll see what the legacy is. But hopefully it'll be one in which I'm making sure that uh, everybody in this country can succeed. Okay, my mama 